revealing my holiday sewing mix. Welcome, I'm Akram Takavi Burris, and you're watching Akram's Ideas, bringing creative and crazy ideas to life. I hope all of you out there had a very happy holiday. And while it is already a new year, before I get into sharing my sewing plans for 2020, I thought I'd take a moment to share all the holiday sewing that I did. And this holiday has been a rarity for me because not only did I get all of the holiday sewing projects that I wanted made, I actually got them done far in advance to Christmas, so much so that I managed to squeeze in a few more holiday makes. So with that said, let me go through and share with you what all I made. I love making handmade gifts for the holidays, and I'm sure many of the other sewers out there uh, would agree that it is something uh, not only meaningful uh, because we took the time to do it, but it is a creative outlet for us. The issue that I run into is that I end up waiting too long uh, before starting any of the projects, and I am actually sewing Christmas gifts up until Christmas morning. And I vowed this year that I would not do that. And I actually took time out of November to do sort of a batch sewing of all the Christmas gifts that I was going to be making uh, for others. So I have three sisters that I often make purses for for the holidays. I also make one for my mom, I make one for my mother-in-law, and then if I if I have time, I'll make a few more for uh, friends and coworkers and stuff like that. So I decided having made the Miss Maggie handbag from Emmeline Bags back in September that I would use that pattern. And it just so happens I also have a full so long video for that bag. It is a free pattern, so it's a very nice make. And I really liked the construction of that bag because it's got a lot of hardware and details and it's a very sturdy bag. But it also has some variations on how you decide to assemble it. So I technically made like seven or eight of the exact same bags in totally different fabrics in various uh, variations of how I assembled the bag. So the first one that I'll talk about is this one here. To see more episodes like this, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to Akram's Ideas, and hit the bell icon to get notified of new episodes. And this one is made out of a faux suede. Um, our previous house that we owned had curtains that were kind of like homemade curtains, and they were just very kind of wonky and whipped up, but they were made out of this faux suede fabric, and I had a ton of it. So I... Um, took the faux suede and I made uh, three of these bags actually. So I made one for my sister, I made one for my coworker, and I made one for me. And this is my bag here, which is also a rarity because typically I'm so busy sewing everybody else's gifts, I don't even end up with a purse of my own. And this is only like the third purse I've ever made for myself. Uh, so this is the Miss Maggie handbag, the standard pretty much version. It's got the side clip here that gives the bag shaping, as you can see. I also had some amazing faux leather that I picked up at an antique store a while back, so all of them had faux leather straps. The inside, I've also made a larger faux leather strap so you carry this a little bit differently I could and the inside I'm just gonna pull out the lining which is this paisley dark paisley it's really really pretty it's got an interior pocket it's got the snap to close it and it's also got the purse feet another little embellishment that I did to this particular purse 
is I added, it just looked so plain, you know, it just looked pretty plain. So I added a little button accent for the purse. And this also gave each purse sort of its uniqueness because I didn't have similar buttons. I intended, I intentionally used buttons that had no pairings or matchings. I've got a bunch of buttons that have no siblings I guess you could say so I can't really use them like on a garment but I can use them as accents and so I took all the gold ones that were a nice size and I placed them on the purse so each purse had a different um button on the front of it and again we're probably never ever going to wear them at the same time so it was a nice little uh purse so like I said I gave I made three of these so I gave one to my sister I gave one to my coworker, and then this one's mine. Another purse that I made uh, is a Christmas purse. Now this is the exact same Miss Maggie handbag pattern, even though this is the same thing. It looks very different um, because of the shaping. On this one, I did not add the side snaps, but this one I used a quilting cotton holiday print if you recall from my last fabric haul of christmas i actually had wound up with some holiday fabric and i believe this was one of them and i made two of these purses i made one for my mom and one for my mother-in-law this is actually the one from my mother-in-law which i still have to give her um but again if i take a little close up here of the bag you can see the print right there and on the inside I went really simple with this bag um, I just did a brown lining but if we take a look on the interior pocket I used some scrap of the outside fabric for the interior pocket um, I also made a really long strap for the bag as well it's got purse snaps now another difference that I did to this purse versus the other one is instead of using purse anchors I just sewed the straps into the purse and I used a little rivet as accent here but they're actually sewn in and I do have a tutorial um, on the vlog here that shares how to sew in your straps versus using the uh, purse anchors. Also made my other sister a white one. Um, she wanted, she told me she wanted something pink and glisteny. Um, so I actually had some pink glisteny. It was like zebra print, but not exactly. It sort of was this abstract zebra print and it was all glisteny and it was pink and white. And while it was beautiful, I didn't feel like that fabric really worked for an exterior of a purse. I felt like it was too thin of a fabric. It was more of a cotton weight fabric. But going through my stash, I found this heavier weight linen that was white that had sort of a silver threading running through it. So at first glance, it just looks white. But as you get up really close to it, you could see this shimmer. So I decided to pair the two fabrics together to make her a purse. And again, it looks totally different. I gave that one to her early because she has actually a birthday in December and that was her birthday present. And I actually sort of did a cross between the two. I made hers um, without the snaps for a couple of reasons. I don't think I think she would prefer just having a bigger bag, but also the thickness of that canvas fabric. It was so thick and I even had a hard time. In fact, unfortunately, one of the rivets popped on her purse and I still need to fix it. Um, but the snaps would be, be difficult to go through just simply because of the thickness of the outer fabric and everything. But I used purse silver hardware on that purse uh, versus these, like I used brass because of the brown tones and everything. But it was very, very successful. I was really happy uh, with those bags. Um, as it so happens, the bags that I made in September, I had actually um, made in intentions for holiday gifts 
uh, for my other sister and actually one for my niece as well. So I already had those pre-made, which also contributed to me getting all the holiday sewing gifts done in time. So in total, I actually constructed six bags during the week of Thanksgiving in a lead up to Christmas. So I had all my holiday sewing done this year in time. So much so that I decided to do some holiday sewing for me and my husband. I already had planned to do some holiday sewing, but I didn't have like sharp deadlines that I wanted to get some something done prior to Christmas just because I wanted to give myself a break from sewing deadlines. Uh, but having gotten all my other Christmas gift sewing done, so the week before Christmas, I had to do a Walmart run to pick up groceries and stuff. And I came across this amazing jersey fleece back throw. So these were like 56 by 60 inch wide throws that you throw on a sofa and they were so cozy and so soft. But my husband had warned me that we do not need any more sofa throws. Like we have a ton of throws and, and we only ever use like one or two on the couch. So I really didn't need the, this, these soft and cozy throws, but they were so cozy and they came in these beautiful colors. And I decided that I would buy a pink one and I would buy sort of this um, gray blue one and I would use them not as throws, but as fabric for holiday sweaters. So this one is actually the one that I'm wearing here is one of the throws. And this is a Utiva, Utiva top from Itch to Stitch Patterns. Another free pattern, which was actually also featured in the Sew Timber Sew Along Megan uh, from Megan Handmade actually uh, did the sew along tutorial for the Utiva top, which I do recommend if you are wanting to make this top for the first time, please uh, check out her channel. Uh, but I actually hacked this top a little bit. So it is just a basic, um, it's got sort of a grown on drop shoulder here, and then it has the sleeve attachment. Um, but it's just got a neck band to the top. And what I've done here, if I just sort of extended the height of the neck band to create sort of this roll neck. And again, I'm just gonna step forward a little bit so you can see that fabric. It is amazing, it's so pretty. And this is the jersey side of it. And then on the back side here is the soft, cozy, fleece side and it is so warm it's my husband called it being wrapped in a blanket so I absolutely love this sweater so before I made this sweater I really wanted to make my husband one and the reason being is that I never really sew for my husband he always says that if I have time to sew I should be sewing what I want um, and not have to make him things but having gotten these uh, this fabric and knowing that he loves cozy sweaters during the winter I decided that I would make him a sweater. Now I had to figure out what pattern to use and I had a few t-shirt patterns and stuff that I thought I could adapt but actually on Pinterest I came across the do it better yourself or DIBY um, patterns that have a variety of different uh, men's, women's, children's type patterns on their website, but they had what was called the basic men's tee. And they had it where it was a short sleeves and a long sleeve, and it was just a basic t-shirt. And I thought, you know, this is great. It's a free pattern. I'm gonna try out this um, pattern. It came in the right side that it had the right look. And so I used that to make the um, sweater for him using this jersey fleece fabric. And um, he loves it so much, he's been wearing it all the time. I will say that I was really, really impressed with the uh, DIBY um, patterns. I'd never heard of them before. Like I said, I sort of came across them on Pinterest and their instructions were 
so detailed and this was a free pattern and they even have a women's uh, t-shirt that is free. so all of the holiday makes were actually free patterns which were really nice and i was really impressed with all of them um the two tops i never made before but i'm really impressed like i said with both of those as well um the itch the stitch ut the top also has some excellent instructions as well and I will put links in the description box below to all the patterns that I talked about in this video. Again, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday and I'd love to hear in the comments below what holiday makes did you sew up? I'd love to hear in the comments below what handmade gifts you made or what handmade gifts you received this past holiday. Thanks for watching. Starting our, let me do that again. Enjoyed them like mini seamstress. Let me do that all over again. So happy, it's awesome. <laughs>